Comme l'a récemment dit le président de la République, la pandémie mondiale est une sonnette d'alarme. La crise de la Covid-19 que nous traversons bouleverse en effet nos certitudes. Elle nous rappelle surtout que le vivant est complexe et qu'il nécessite une approche transversale. Santé humaine, santé animale et santé environnementale sont intimement liées. Nous devons encore faire mieux. Il faut toujours mieux prévenir pour avoir une fine moins souvent à guérir. Sur le plan mondial, échanger dans un objectif de prévention et d'anticipation des maladies zoonotiques est une priorité absolue. C'est évidemment le but de ce colloque, de l'initiative Présode, qui nous réunit aujourd'hui. Je l'espère, ce projet fera naître de fortes coopérations entre tous les pays et permettra à terme de renforcer notre vigilance commune face à l'émergence de zoonoses pouvant devenir les pandémies de demain. Life in this planet knows no border. So it is essential that science goes beyond existing borders to one planet, one health, one science. We have the problem that 60% of existing human infectious diseases are, are zoonotic and 70% of the emerging infections come from a natural reservoir. It would be very useful to find out how many unknown viruses there are, where are they, and which species of wildlife have them, who is making contact with them. If we really want to prevent future pandemics, and that is exactly um, what the Prisod initiative is focusing on, this sort of basic science around um, uh, zoonotic diseases that will inform policy decisions in the future. And I think that's why this is so critical. And when we calculate the economic costs of pandemics, we estimate between 500 billion and one trillion dollars a year. And probably that's an underestimate. SARS-CoV-2 itself will be responsible for 16 trillion dollars of economic shock to our global system um, within a few months. And it may end up costing a lot more. But global strategies to prevent pandemics through deforestation reduction or the implementation of that selective bans or modifications to the wildlife trade would cost just in the tens of billions of dollars annually, two orders of magnitude less than the damages pandemics produce. We need to work upstream to mitigate the risks with two complementary actions, anticipating and preventing emergence risks, and also providing early detection and rapid reaction before pandemic spread. So to do this, uh, we also need uh, research, further research on understanding the risks of emergence and epidemics. We see the initiative so far, but this is still uh, obviously very much open to discussion with five pillars. First is uh, zoonotic risk assessment. Second is risk reduction. Third is early detection and socioeconomic evaluation. And fourth is uh, prototyping Uh, a surveillance system of the zoonotic risks, certainly in close collaboration, supporting the efforts of the tripartite, of uh, the UNEP and other uh, national health uh, systems and the national health uh, systems. So we will contribute to what they are doing. And cross-cutting, extremely important, is a, a pillar about stakeholders' engagement, co-development of health networks and policies. The goal of Prezod is to to really change the current dogma uh, about pandemics. So currently, most of the research and the, the pandemic preparedness plan is really about how we can control a pandemic when it's here. While actually, so in this present initiative, uh, the goal is quite different, is to really be efficient before the, the pandemic is, is occurring. The objective of this present initiative So the first one will be to try to really assess what are the risk, what are the factors that drive the risk of zoonosis emergence uh, in wildlife and in interface between wildlife, domestic animals and, and human populations and environment, of course. So the second objective will be to try to understand how we can reduce the risk of zoonosis emergence, especially through the conception, the design of social ecosystems that are sustainable in order to, to, to prevent uh, emergence of zoonosis. The third objective will be to try to improve our capacity for early detection and also to evaluate the socioeconomic impact of such strategies for zoonotic risk. Uh, a very important achievement also would be to develop 
a global surveillance system of zoonotic risk uh, in order to have a data system that is uh, extremely interoperable with a lot of very heterogeneous kind of data through the world. So we will try to develop this kind of, of global surveillance system uh, that can aggregate a lot of different data. And finally, we will do all of these objectives with a clear also objective of capacity building uh, through the world. So what we are really pushing forward there and promoting is this innovation to move from this top-down approach to a bottom-up or a mixed approach. So at the moment, the strategies are really defined uh, at the, uh, the higher level, uh, pushed by international priorities. They are defined at the state level and they are enforced at the local and individual level. However, in the field, we know that it doesn't work this way. And often this gets modified in the way and it, sometimes it doesn't work at all. The idea is really to uh, build with the individual farmer or household or people, local communities that interface with animals and the local authority to build up the, um, the strategy based on their constraints and needs. And of course, to embed this within uh, the national strategies and policies to ensure sustainability and efficiency uh, in, in its implementation. We have also to uh, uh, to raise awareness and commitment, including at political level, to sustain research and scientific knowledge, like through the, the Prezod initiative, for example. Prezod and the, these discussions are extremely timely and extremely welcome. Uh, when we say One Health life depends on it, I think now this year we have learned that we really have to have an urgency in our international work, that the scale of our work uh, really has has not, for various reasons, been in keeping with the risk. And so life really does depend on the way that we work together. The Prezod is, is really the, the, uh, the research arm of this long chain of needed uh, changes. And, and uh, we need to, to make this, this One Health uh, really uh, dramatically change the the way we look at things and the way we will prevent the next pandemic. It's really making sure that resources are going to support high-risk countries, and they may be high risk, in particular because of their inherent risk from biotic, abiotic, and social factors, but they also may be at high risk because of just capacity gaps that we have to fill. Um, and so really not leaving those countries behind, but frankly, starting with them uh, to prevent the next pandemic. So if you have an in-house uh, internal, I mean, one health uh, team looking at this. And in this capacity, uh, the bank is very pleased, I mean, to uh, support and be part of the uh, Pizodi um, in, in initiative. We have seen a large interest from many countries and uh, we see uh, that there is focus uh, in some regions in Africa, in uh, Central and Latin America, uh, also Southeast Asia. Certainly uh, we, we have a number of participants from Europe, but also some from North America and uh, Australia. Importantly, we not only have research here, uh, we have uh, a bit more of a half, which are people involved in operational missions and also in uh, the research to operational interfaces. So that's uh, really uh, encouraging for what uh, should, uh, what uh, Prezod should do, which is uh, to connect precisely uh, research and operational activities across world regions. The importance of the co-construction with sub-Zen country in terms of research, operational network, and the bottom of up approach involve communities in the different pillars, participatory approaches. Prezod should be there then as a, a catalyzer of effort to better integrate actions on animal, human, and uh, environmental health to better also uh, coordinate effort on, at national, regional, and international level. A strong contribution for numerous countries, universities, these institutes and NGOs are already ongoing on in the region. Together with INRA, IRD, CIRAD, Pasteur Network would like to foster a European and international mobilization around the One Planet Summit. The Earth has reached many tipping points, and so we need this joint effort, effort to tackle the environmental biodiversity, health, and climate crisis.
So what is next now? Uh, what we believe is that uh, for such an ambitious initiative, we need a strong co-design stage with all partners. This can lead us into a scientific agenda and a strategic agenda. And to do so, to create those agendas, we need to work together uh, through working groups that can be by pillars, the pillars of the initiatives. Uh, we need to uh, have further participatory workshops uh, at national scale or regional scale. And uh, obviously, uh, we need to engage dialogue uh, for, with the donors uh, to understand uh, how this could be uh, supported. So we expect to work mostly in 2021 in that uh, co-design mood. Then um, we, we should get uh, in uh, early uh, 2022 or late 2021, a first implementation plan where we would really uh, start uh, engaging into all the uh, buildup of uh, the pillars uh, in each uh, region. And we would start uh, engaging the policy support. Uh, I guess after two years, we need uh, some evaluation and we need to start off with a second implementation plan. What can we achieve? I think it is really important to ask ourselves while um, building a network with, with a goal like this, um, to also define some overarching and interim goals that we can actually achieve. Um, one, for, in, for instance, is the sensitization and mobilization of society and, and of politics um, regarding this common goal, this burning topic, um, the political mobilization, um, the acknowledgement of biodiversity being a, a political um, representation of, of other um, topics like climate change, for instance. And the other is um, cross-sectorial collaboration. Collaboration is a goal per se. So there is a lot of work ahead. I'm uh, very happy to, to have been invited to listen and to, um, to give some perspectives on this whole undertaking 